Hi there, my name is Jeremy Krug and I'd like to welcome you back to my chemistry channel. In this video, we're going to be learning about how to do mole conversion problems. Now, if you've been watching this series of videos, you've seen in the last couple of videos that we've already been converting from moles to atoms, uh, atoms to moles. Uh, we've learned about moles to liters of gas at STP. We've learned about how to convert grams to moles. We've done all of these individual units. Well, in this video, we're going to put all of those units together and see how to solve some multi-step problems. Now, before we do this, let's try to organize all of our thoughts here into one graphical organizer. Now, the unit that ties everything together is the mole. That's the unit that we've used to talk about all of these other uh, values that have, have tied in to the mole. Now, the first set of units that we learned about in this series were atoms, molecules, ions, some other little teeny tiny particle. And we said that there's one mole that's equivalent to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of those little teeny tiny particles. And so if you're converting from moles to atoms or molecules or other particles, this is what you're going to do. You'll use one and 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd in your conversion factor. Now, the next unit that we learned about was liters. And we said that one mole is equal to 22.4 liters of gas at STP. So that was the second unit that we incorporated into this discussion about moles. Now, the third unit that we put into this discussion was grams. And we said that one mole is equivalent to whatever the atomic mass of an element is in grams. For a compound, it's the sum of all the individual atomic masses of those component elements. So if we take this visual organizer here, we should be able to convert from any one of these units to any other of these units. So for example, if we had a problem that gave us a value of uh, a certain number of liters of gas at STP, could we determine how many molecules were in that? And the answer is yes. It's a two-step problem, but we'd have to convert to moles first and then convert to molecules second. Or if the question told us we had a certain number of grams of a substance. And the question said, how many atoms are in that sample? Well, could we do that? Absolutely. It's a two-step process. We'd have to convert from grams to moles first, and then from moles to atoms. So if this is a roadmap for solving these types of mole conversion problems, I suppose we can say that in our roadmap, all roads lead to moles. And so what that means is, when I say all roads lead to moles, is that if you have a multi-step problem, the first thing you want to do is convert to moles. Now, let's do a couple of examples and see how this works. So we'll start with this problem. It says, what is the mass of 0 0.250 liters of carbon dioxide gas at STP? Now, we're going to start by writing down what's given to us, the 0 0.250 liters of carbon dioxide. The formula for that is CO2, in case you didn't know that. And since we're solving for the mass, that means that grams will be way down here at the end of the problem, grams of CO2. Now, we can consult the roadmap, and if we're going from liters to grams, what do we have to convert to first? Well, we have to convert to to moles, don't we? All roads lead to moles. So in my first conversion factor, I'm going to put liters on the bottom and moles on the top. Now, what numbers go into this conversion factor? Well, one mole is equal to 22.4 liters. Now, if you forgot that, or if you aren't sure which number to put in which position, then look at the roadmap. Because next to mole, the number 1 is there. And next to liters, we see the number 22.4. So we can use the road map to help us know which numbers to put in which positions in these conversion factors. Now, we can cancel liters top and bottom just like that. And now, if we were to stop here, we'd be in moles 
of carbon dioxide, wouldn't we? But we don't want to be in moles. We want to be in grams. So we have one more step to go here, converting from moles to grams. So in our second conversion factor, I need to have moles in the denominator. And since we're converting to grams, grams will go on top. Now, how many grams are in one mole of CO2? Well, we can look at the periodic table. Every carbon atom is about 12.01, and every oxygen atom is about 16.00, and we have two of them. So that adds up to about 44.01 grams in one mole of carbon dioxide. So I can cancel moles, top and bottom, just like this. And now, on my calculator, all I have to do is take 0 0.250 divided by 22.4 times 44.01. And when I compute that, I find that the answer is about 0 0.491 grams of carbon dioxide gas. So that's a pretty neat conversion that we can actually take a volume of a gas and figure out what the mass of the gas is without ever using a scale or a balance. So let's try another example. This one says, how many formula units are in 29.3 grams of sodium chloride? Now, a formula unit is just the uh, most fundamental unit of an ionic compound. We'll talk more about that here in an upcoming video. Formula unit is I guess kind of like a molecule would be, but for an ionic compound. Now let's start out with 29.3 grams of NaCl. And the question is how many formula units? So way down here at the end, we're gonna have formula units of NaCl. So if we look at our roadmap, we can see how many steps this will be. This is a two-step process. If we're converting from grams to formula units, what do we have to convert to first? Well, that would be moles, wouldn't it? All roads lead to moles. So in our first conversion factor, grams will go on the bottom and moles go on the top. Now, according to the roadmap, next to mole, we put a one, and next to grams, we use atomic mass. So we have to add up sodium, which is 22.99, and add that to chlorine, which is 35.45 on the periodic table. And we find that the total is about 58.44 grams in a mole of sodium chloride, NaCl. So now we can cancel grams top and bottom. We're in moles. And now we can convert to formula units. And so in our next conversion factor, moles will go on the bottom. And then formula units will go on the top. I apologize for the abbreviation there. Now, how many formula units are in a mole? Well, however many little teeny tiny particles there are, it's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units in one mole of that substance. So now we can cancel moles top and bottom. And whenever we do the multiplication and division, 29.3 divided by 58.44, times Avogadro's number, we find that we have about 3.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of sodium chloride. So that is the answer. So that's pretty neat that we can actually take a mass of a substance we've weighed out on a scale or a balance, and we can determine how many little particles are actually in that sample by just doing a couple conversions. I hope you learned something from this video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider smashing that like button. I would really appreciate that. In the next video, we're gonna move on to a different topic, which is going to be the motion of particles in a substance. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you next time.